a little jealous, guys. Take it away. No track, Larry, this size has ever played host to a starting field of $7 million. I called my banker. I said, you be watching because I want to borrow the money to buy one of these cars. <laughs> this is just simply amazing. I just can't imagine being able to put together these kinds of drivers as well as these kind of cars. All right, the blind draw from yesterday will have Bob on the pole. He starts inside row number one, the sports car veteran from upstate New York, and alongside the USAC stock car champion. NASCAR, most popular driver on two occasions, Fred Lorenzen from Illinois. In the second row, on the inside, the veteran sports car racer from Columbus, Ohio, Dick Greer, in the green number six, outside a six-time U.S. national champion. Ed McCulloch comes here from California. We move now to the inside of row three, the veteran from Arlington, Texas, from USAC competition, Jim McElreath, 65 years of age, and Bobby Allison from Hueytown, Alabama, returns after five years of inactivity. And then it's Jerry Grant inside row four, the sports car and IndyCar veteran, now living in Missouri. And outside, the winner of 1952's Indy 500, Troy Rutman, he won it at the age of 22. And then, starting alone in row five, Dick Trickle, formerly from Wisconsin. Now he lives in North Carolina. Now we ride with Jimmy McElroy, 65 years of age. He's in an exotic sports car this week. Last Friday, he won, or was leading a sprint car. Oh, look at that. Look who's here. Benny Parsons. You think these guys aren't excited? They all going to give her just a scoop. They don't want to be left out. They I love what Benny. Happened. Benny's quote, he said, take all the cars I've ever driven in racing, add them all together, and they don't amount to $750,000. I know. <laughs> these guys are so excited. They don't want to miss a trick. They think they can learn anything. They're going to be here trying to learn, man. All right. And once again, we're riding the CarQuest cage cam. Is, oh, look at that. Johnny Parsons. Johnny Parsons in a couple of years will be eligible. He's 48 years old right now. In a couple of years, we'll be looking for JP out there. There's a lot of interest from everybody, Gary. Everybody's <laughs> really anxious just to know what's going to happen. What are these guys going to do? Once again, riding now with Jimmy McElreath. And Jim will start inside the third row. This will be 10 laps on the oval. Now, this is the blind draw from yesterday. However, their finishing order here will determine the starting lineup for our second race inverted. The winner here will start to scratch. Well, it's going to be neat to watch this start. Everybody's going to try to outbox each other, but we're going to find out who has remembered best how to do that. Pair of silver cards up front. Bobby Aiken on the inside. Look at that. He missed the shift. Aiken missed the shift, and they're all on the brakes trying to avoid contact. Yeah, we... Boy, when, that, when they missed that shift up front, everybody on the brakes, tires were smoking, everybody going every which way, trying to get around him. But it's battled down the back stretch. Lorenzen had the lead, but there goes number eight. Amazing. That is Ed McCulloch. That's the six-time U.S. national champion. He's never raced at a noble, and he's out in front. Started outside the second row. Got an excellent start. Lorenzen rides in second. Bobby Allison goes third. Well, I'll tell you what, they must not have been lying. He's been practicing down that return road all these years. Nobody even knew it, man. That's Dick Greer, the green number six, moving on the inside, coming off the second corner. He pulls alongside of Troy Ruffin. They are side by side into three. That's McElroy. That's the 10 car right there. Ruffin, McElroy, and the nine car trying to split him. Look at that Fred. He almost got Ruffin. He didn't get Ruffin. He did get Ruffin. And Trickle gets into him. Trickle right through victory lane. Trickle in the black 11 car. There's a shot from Ruffin. Or no, that's from McElroy. McElroy the black nine. And there's a shot of the black 11 of Trickle. So indeed, there's Jimmy. He is okay. McElreath is okay. He actually did make contact, apparently, with Troy Ruffman. Well, he, he tried to stick his nose in there. He tried to get out of it, but he lost the rear end when he was out of the throttle. That thing got sideways. Uh, when he spun, poor old Drick Trickle had no place to go. He hit him, uh, and boy, that car's uh, pretty badly damaged right there. It's been a tough weekend for Dick Trickle. He tried to qualify at Michigan yesterday, failed. Then he comes in here for some practice. He goes back to Michigan to qualify today. He comes back to race tonight. He goes back to race at Michigan tomorrow. And he's testing IROC in Michigan on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah. Let's take a look at what happens again as he tries to make it three abreast. Oh, he, he didn't really hit anybody. He just tried to stick his nose down there. When he saw he didn't have room, he tried to pinch it a little bit. And we did it at the back end, just came around. And boy, they knocked down a lot of beautiful <laughs> time work there. There goes, there goes Victory Lane. Let's look again. I think he does make. Well, no, I don't think so, Gary. It looks to me like he was just right. 
right there in the middle. And as he tried to go up, no, he lost the back end. He tried to correct, and I think he just spun. He just uh, tried to correct that thing when the back end got around. But boy, look, I tell you, Bob Aiken did one heck of a job to stay out of the middle of that thing as he went uh, clear to the back. Oh, boy, he really cleaned out that checkerboard sign. Wow. Well, it was tough for Bob Aiken because he obviously had the great starting spot, missed the shift. He's been going well in practice on the oval, but it really wasn't meant to be. He's got his work cut out for him now as the uh, car is headed back. Well, there's a look at uh, Aiken, and you can see he's got some driver's side door. And let's go down the track side of Dave Wilson. We're down here with Jimmy McElroy. Jimmy, how was it going for you? Now, what happened exactly? Well, the car was working real good, and I had to him get, get in the middle of those two cars, and I got up in the middle of them and just got things down a little bit and went around on me. Do you think you're gonna, you had a chance of getting up to the front there and showing him the fast way around the 5 8 oval here? Well, I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> going back up to you, Gary and Larry. We just mentioned earlier he was racing that legend sprint car race last Friday night. In fact, led the first half of the race, ended up finishing fourth at Knoxville. That's so right. From a sprint car to an exotic sports car. Yeah, well, Jimmy's been running every kind of race car imaginable for the last, I don't know, 30 years, I suppose. And he's not intimidated by any of them. He doesn't care with the sprint car at, at Knoxville, Iowa, or $750,000 Jaguar. He's going to run that thing as fast as it'll go. And, and that's what he was trying to do. He just got a little loose and... Uh, the thing uh, backed around on him and uh, caught the other car. Caught. All right, call it again. He tries to make it three wide. Doesn't work. Now he pulled in there. He just he got a little pin. He got right in between them. The back end got a little bit loose. You're going to see the back end swing out. Then he lost the front end. He tried to keep from hitting the other car, which he did. But what he did, the back end just came around. And poor old Dick Trickle was just a victim of circumstances. Had no place to go. Bam, right in the fence. Then they make contact again. And Bob Aiken got into Trickle during that uh, confrontation a little bit. And I think Dave is with Trickle right now, Dave. Sir, I am down here with Dick Trickle. Dick, if, you're, uh, if your trip at Fastmasters has been as long as your trip from the airport to the IRP, it's been a lot better off, wouldn't you? Uh, you know, you know, we run a Raymond car over there for the, you know, back to Joe's America people in the Winston Cup, but we run late because they had some rain over there, and the Arcade's got over, we get an hour of practice later. So uh, we run a late arrival here, but they waited his heat on us. But we won practice down here last night, more or less, and run real good. And, you know, they drew uh, uh, 10 spots starting for me, which is the back of the pack. And, you know, you can't, with 10 laps to go, you can't give too much. So I was making a charge up underneath, and one of the outside cars spun down and come across the track and, you know, into my path, and I couldn't avoid him. So. Did it feel pretty good out there for you? Well, we just, we just got a couple laps where we were getting sorted out, you know. But uh, last night's practice, I run real good, so I think I had a good shot of winning this thing. You like the feel of the car? really do, you know, it's, it's a terrific series, you know, I talked to the guys, and, you know, I'm really sad that I'm out of it, because I think I was going to be one of the contenders to, to win the big one, and uh, here we are with, uh, got caught up in somebody else's stuff again. Well, better luck to, uh, tomorrow up in Michigan. Thank you. Back up to Gary and Larry. Oh, doesn't that say it all in racing? You get caught up in somebody else's mess. Yes, you do. I've said before in this series, I think it's not going to be necessarily the fastest guy that wins this series. It's going to be the smartest guy. You and the have, luckiest. And the luckiest. That's right. You have to be lucky, but you've got to be smart. You've got to take care of your equipment, and you've got to be around when this thing is over with. But look who's leading this thing, Gary. I'm impressed. I was impressed yesterday. Now, he did take a couple of schools. He went to Bondurant School out at Willow Springs, and uh, he's been on this track in a modified. But, hey, when a guy has his kind of experience in drag racing, we didn't expect him to be leading at this point. <laughs> That's right, we didn't, but he's doing a fantastic job. Well, he leads, and there's a look at that silver number seven riding in second. That would be uh, Fred Lorenzen. And then Bobby Allison is third. Then it's Troy Rutman and Dick Greer. Only two laps. We've got eight more to go from Raceway Park. that I was younger. There's the green flag. Now we are racing once again on lap number three, the first of three heat races for the Fastmasters. And now the challenge develops for second position. Fred Lorenz in the silver number seven. He's being challenged there by the green number three of Bobby Allison. I think Allison's trying to figure out a way to get around Lorenz. Lorenz seems to be holding him up. But Ruffman's right behind him, and Ruffman's down on the bottom side. Looks like he's going to try to give him a... Keep it going, keep it going, got the fence. Troy Ruffin spins and gets the fence. Oh, man. He 
looked like he had a shot at getting by on the low side and the, the, the chassis it was, a great, it was a great move and the, the problem is gary these race cars are fairly heavy they're about 2500 pounds and you cannot just run them in there and stop a slide once a slide starts with these things it's awfully awfully difficult to get them slowed back uh, to stop so uh that was what happened to troy he got in there he just couldn't get that thing load and uh had to keep going but look at Jerry Grant there in the dark five. He was on the top side of Dick Greer's six car, but the green stays out. In the meantime, well, McCullough's gone. Lorenzen rides in second, but Ed the Ace looks like he's going to pick up a victory here and perhaps 10 points. Now the yellow comes out. Now the yellow is out. You can see the yellow as they work into the corner as we ride with uh, Bobby Allison. Well, Ed the Ace got a great start on the original start, moved right in the front in the first corner. And he looks to be fairly comfortable out there right now. I think uh, everybody in the drag racing world is as surprised as we are. There's a no, these things are fairly fragile, but they might be able to get it fixed. Well, there's some damage there to Jerry Grant. Well, now we ride for the restart with Bobby Allison. He rides back in third. That's uh, fearless Freddie Lorenzen right in front of him. And Ed the Ace McCullough leads the way as they go to work on lap number five. That's Bob Aiken who's running fourth in this silver number two car. So it's you know, he's, uh, he's moved all the way to the back. He went clear to the back. Now he's clear back up to fourth position. Yeah, we've got a uh, silver car riding in second. That's Freddie Lorenzen. And then the uh, green car of Allison. Another silver car vacant. He can miss the shift at the start, or he may have been out in front right now. Yeah, he, he had a good starting position, but just missed the shift there at the beginning and went clear to last place. He's moved his way back up to fourth position. And he looks like he's uh, real anxious to move on up a little farther, but I think he, after watching the last couple of spins, he's going to be very careful because he doesn't want to... Uh, mess anything up for the last two heats. Five laps down, five laps to go. What do you think of your ace McCullough? You look in the rear view mirror, you see these guys behind you with two stock car veterans, hey, and you've got a gap on them. If you're ace McCullough right now, you're styling and smiling, boy. You're out there in front having a great time. You think, this is great. I've been hearing all about these great bull track races all my life, and I'm blowing their doors off. <laughs> and you just can't wait to get your shot in a few years, right? But the gap remains uh, status quo. And there again, Aiken takes a look to the inside. He wants a piece of Bobby Allison. Well, as you can see, all these cars are fairly equal. They're all still on the same straightaway. Bobby Allison, you know, these guys haven't raced in a while, some of them, and they're, and they're having a little trouble figuring out a way to get past the guys in front of them. Aiken's dropped to the bottom. He's going to try it in there. He no, can't quite do it. He's, he's still on the bottom, but he's, he's a little leery of that less banking. As I said before, 10 degree banking at the top. It's only, it graduates down to about 4 degrees far on the bottom. Down to where he's at, it's only about 6 degree banking. He just can't get the banking to hold it to get around. Now remember, 10 points for the winner of this heat race, 9 points per second, and will invert the start of the second heat race on the modified road course by virtue of their finish here. So Ed, if he wins this, would have to start at the back of the back. We look back and hey, oh, they're going to try three wide again down the straightaway. Don't do that, guys. Well, I'm worried they're getting, they're getting off the race. They're getting brave. Allison sees it. He had a chance to get under him. He's moved down a little bit. Aiken was underneath him. Here we see Aiken. He's going to move down to the bottom again in that two car. No, can't quite do it. He just doesn't want to risk it. The last way around here is up on the high side, but to make a pass, you've got to run where the other guy isn't running, and right now that means low. Well, to try to equalize it, here comes the white flag out this time by Gary. Here we go. They're going to do it this time. Allison's going to have to try it this time. White flag. McCall's got a good lead. He's not going to be beat. Well, right now, it's all his race to win. And he comes off the second corner, heads down the back stretch. The battle continues for third. And he wants to move up one spot. It's Lorenzen there in the silver number seven. He rides in second. Then the three car of Allison is third. And fourth is Bob Aiken, the silver number two. There is the checker flag. What a surprise. The fans salute. Look at Allison. Allison. Look at Allison. Allison. Oh, he tried it, but he takes third. Allison takes second. Allison takes third. Every street racer in America is saying, let him on, let him on. And look at Davey looking on as the... Dad takes third position after five years out of the cockpit. There's a look. Oh, look at the OK. He's waving to somebody, another competitor perhaps. And look at the smile. Look at the grin on Bobby Allison. I don't think any of us sitting here or at home can imagine the feelings that man and his family have right now. After all this time, he's just got his pilot's license back. He's just gotten back in a race car. This has got to be one of the most satisfying parts of his whole life to know that he can do this again. Well, I understand that he has been taking a few rides with his Winston Cup uh, car when they test that. And I wonder if perhaps he'd like to get back in the, the cockpit of a race car again. Look at this. Ed, the ace, he's won six times in the drag strip directly behind us. He's won the U.S. Nationals 
five times in the funny cars, once in top fuel, and I don't think anybody, despite how well he went last night in practice, would have believed that he would have won this first heat. I, I tell you what, he surprised me more than anybody yesterday. Even though he had that dunk on uh, Emot out here uh, last week, and back in the fence. He really surprised me. Here's the battle for second. Lorenzen, the silver number seven. But look at Bobby Allison. Pinches it a bit. Looks to the inside. He needed another hundred yards or so. And he may have had him. Well, I tell you what. That was a great effort on his part. He knew that was the last lap. He saved it all up. He tried to get him. He just didn't quite get it done. Well, the banking wasn't high enough. The fast, the speed was not fast enough for the Daytona slingshot. That's, That's right. what he was trying. That's right. The drafting <laughs> wasn't good enough. That's exactly what happened. So once again, Ed the Ace McCullough takes the victory over uh, Freddie Lorenzen. Renzen, Bobby Allison third, and Bob Aiken was fourth, and uh, a very happy Allison in the form of Davy, his son. Who